um, here in the San Antonio community. I'm an activist and author, um, and we would like to welcome this evening the SA4, and we thank you for being here. We please want you to spread the word. If you have a place where you can screen this film and invite the women, please do that. Please reach out to them this evening, right now and after this, and just continue to do your activism. If you see something, again, that's unjust, let's change this. If you guys are friends, by the way, with Nico LaHood, you also need to call him. If you know somebody who knows Nicola Hood who can push this thing, call him. Get him going. If you want to donate some money to the SA4 and their legal fees, there's also a donation basket. If you want to call your politician, your, you know, do all of those things. Sign the petition. There's a petition on this event page. Share that petition with everybody. In like one month, we have 25,000 signatures approximately. And we could take another 25,000 more if you're ready to pass that on and share it with everybody. <laughs> So let's invite, I don't want to waste any more of your time, let's invite the SA4 here to this evening. I, either they've introduced themselves on the film, they will introduce themselves again. I would like to please give them a welcome round of applause and thankful to them for surviving this and being here to be a voice for our community. Thank you so much. Well, for me, it's hard. My son's fixing to leave in January because the Marines. 
Yeah. Right now. Ooh. 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 Okay. So um, it's kind of difficult because our time together is limited. So we and with him working and trying to do his PT, he has to kind of. He told me the other day that he's trying to get top of his class as far as PT because he wants to be able to wear a certain uniform when he graduates on basic training. So he's working really hard for that. And so I just try to encourage him with that. And at the same time, of course, I don't want my baby to leave. But, you know, I have to, just to encourage him and, you know, stand by his side for a while. Well, um, as you saw in the movie, Michael and Ashley were about seven and eight when I left them. They were little, but they were old enough to understand what was happening with us, that we were going to have to go away. So, there's a lot of damage that was done while I was gone. You know, um, in the movie, when we're sitting down, I was just telling uh, Denise when we were talking about it um, out there while y'all were watching it, there's a scene where I'm talking to them and I'm just talking about how I use a phone or whatever now and how I learned. Um, my son and my daughter are smiling a lot. And you know, it's crazy because my mom tells me all the time, before you came home, they never smiled like that, you know? So it feels good to know that I brought this happiness back into their lives. I mean, because for, for many years, they were in a dark shadow is what they say, where they felt like just a cloud was over them because they had no sense of hope or happiness, you know? Until I finally came home, so it feels good to be a mother again. <laughs> get to speak to Stephanie and Noah for, for you know, signing that, um, that letter of saying that, do y'all get to speak to her? Do y'all get to? When, when she uh, signed the affidavit, that was we, while we were still in prison. We had no idea that that was happening. We didn't find that out until after the or, fact. Are y'all not allowed to speak to her or because of the ongoing investigation? Right, right. One thing that I want to say is I want to continue to be an activist and I want to be big in our community. Um, the love that everybody has shown us has been amazing. Um, and it's something that, I mean, I know that there's other issues that we need to fight for, you know, other than just this. And I like that when everybody comes together, it's, it feels very positive. Um, this is a great atmosphere. I love, like we were talking about the vibe earlier, you know, and I, it's just something that I want to continue to do. Um, I think for me, with um, us, all the screenings and things, I've met a whole lot of people throughout the, throughout the way that I've kept in contact, so I hope to continue with that. Um, yesterday, Irene and Alex had a gay Thanksgiving, and it was my first time there. It was wonderful. I met a whole lot of people, and you know, a lot of people that are activists that, that are, and people that want to be. And so I think, if, for me, I want to continue in that community and help out. Yes. Yeah. I, I, uh... I can't even begin to imagine what y'all have gone through, and I just you know, guess you're out, but you're having to deal with what's going on. How do you how do you cope? How do you cope with it every day, no, not knowing? I just I can't even begin to imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to have this weight on our shoulders still. You know, we're grateful to be out. You know, but there's still a cloud over us, like you said. You know, it's. We have to think twice about making big decisions. You know, um, for example, myself and my partner, we bought in a car together, and I have to discuss things about that, like, you know, what happens if I do go back to prison? Will you be able to take care of this? You know, and, and it's just, uh, you know, it's just different. It's just different, guys. I mean, we can't pick up and go. You know, we've been wanting to take vacations since we've been out of prison. We can't. There's some places that our, uh, you know, our attorneys don't think is proper. You know, for example, Las Vegas. You know, I would love to be, uh, you know, in Vegas, but it doesn't look proper. You know, and all eyes are on us, so we have to act accordingly. And you know, that's, you know, you're you're always watched. So not only by the courts, but by the public, by the media. You know, so it's it's really difficult. I mean. But at the same time, you know, we've been through so much. Like I said, we're grateful. We take things day by day. And our family, our faith in God, and now the community.
That's what keeps us going. I found a wrong story in the current. Does anybody plan on writing a book or biography or something along those lines? I don't know if you can ask that, but yeah. something, I mean, is, there, is that something that y'all plan to do in the future? Or? Yeah, some of us have been approached with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because, I mean, it's a beautiful story. What I've read so far and research I've done, I mean, Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. I'm sorry. Um, has the community or San Antonio as a whole been more accepting of you guys um, as San Antonio poor, or are you still, still dealing with the adversity and negativity around the city? Well, amazingly, we haven't had any negative negativity. Since uh, we were released, we've been shown nothing but love and acceptance. Um, now it's way bigger from back in 1993 or whatever when, you know, that we had nobody there for us. But now, I mean, we haven't, I've never been approached, we've never been approached by anybody that has anything negative to say about us or whenever we meet people, they tell us they're praying for us. They'll recognize us from TV or from ID Discovery and they're just, they're thrilled that, you know, we're telling our story and that we're doing okay and they pray that we're exonerated also, so. So we're hoping, yes, that that, um, that would open doors for other people in our situation. I think it'd be said that a lot of minorities are virtually targeted by the police, and especially when you look at incarceration rates, uh, minorities traditionally um, don't have the same percentage of, as, as far as being found innocent. What are some ways that minorities can combat that, and what would be your advice? others that feel that maybe they're wrongfully accused or, or being targeted? The first thing I would, I would tell somebody if they were accused of a crime, it didn't matter what kind of crime, lawyer up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Automatically. No matter how the cops make you feel, because they use that against you. They, they make you see, they, they, they tell you, why do you need an attorney? You know, if you're innocent, why do you need an attorney? You know, and, and really, guys, it's your life, you know, and if we had more knowledge, I think, and um, obviously more money, yeah. you know, we probably wouldn't have ever gone to prison. But like you said, we're minorities, we're lesbians, you know, we're Hispanic, we come from, you know, poverty backgrounds. You know, it wasn't easy, and, you know, I, I went through a uh, court appointment, and when I went in there, he wanted to take a plea bargain. Didn't even give me an option. He didn't say, you know, let's discuss this. No. We're going to take a plea bargain. And I, that just wasn't going to happen with me. You know, but that's the, that's the thing that I can tell you, or anyone that has to go through this for the very first time and is not knowledgeable, is naive to the system and really believes, just like we do, we did, that innocent people don't go to prison. You know, we really believe that. And that is so far from the truth, unfortunately. So I think that there has to be a lot of changes in the judicial system. Right. system. That's my personal opinion. Yes. What about Javier? Are there any... No. no. Sorry. It's, it's a good question and we get that asset a lot. We, we just can't. We can't. I'm sorry. Thank you. How's it been getting back as far as... You have your life and family, but as far as employment and making a living and 
Well, for me, fortunately, I'm blessed. I work um, for Toyota, and um, it's a good it's a good job. And yeah. um, I hope to continue with that even afterwards if I'm able to. All right. Not everybody's as fortunate. No. I don't have a great job right now because uh, my dedication, my motivation, and my time is dedicated to us traveling and, um, you know, telling our story, letting people know what happened to us because it's it's something serious to me. And I'm very, me and Anna were very, very passionate about it. And we just want the world to know that this could really, you know, happen to other people. And we need exoneration because that's when they're finally going to be able to say that they're giving our lives back. I was taken from my two kids and I feel like they are owed so much for what was taken from them because honestly I feel like the real victims are the children and my in my case. I'll speak for myself in that one because I may have been hurting but I know my children were suffering at home more than I was. And that's why I suffered every day when I was behind bars. So my whole thing is I need that exoneration for my kids. And I need it for the rest of the people of the world also so they'll know that there is hope because they need that as well. Because I know when I was in there, if I were to be reading stories like this and I was able to research and do things, it would give me something to live for. Me something to have motivation for. So, that's what I'm doing. Ma'am? So, if you can say that anything positive, if anything has come from this, would that be like something positive? I think so. I think because um, at first I didn't realize what we were doing here, you know. Um, but now that I see that we're touching so many lives, you know, it, it it's a good feeling, you know, to know that we can help people. I mean, on Facebook through Messenger, if you know people, have, you know, come up to me and they'll ask me questions, and I'm able to give them some type of peace of mind, you know, if they have, a, they don't know, like us, we were naive, we didn't know who to talk to, you know. Um, we didn't know not to take a plea bargain. We didn't, I mean, we didn't take a plea bargain, but nobody tried to help us in that aspect. So now we're able to talk to people and let them know if they have certain issues in their families. And I have, I've had a lot of people come to me and tell me, you know, please, will you talk to me? And if you just give them five, 10 minutes of your time and let them know, hey, there's hope out there, it makes them feel better, you know, and then they know what to do.